Happy birthday to me. And the silly hat that I have to wear. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I've got a happy birthday hat on. You do have a happy birthday hat on. I do, because this is my birthday. Because it's your birthday. And I'm going to look like a little Bo Peep with my headphones on. Is it really your birthday? Yeah, today is my birthday. I got a birthday hat on. Happy birthday. Happy, happy times. <laughs> happy, happy times. I got to wear this hat. My son makes me wear this hat. Happy, happy birthday. I look like a little boy. <laughs> <I really do. laughs> Dude, I'm doing Dude. four hours. Like, come on. Let's... Come on. This is ugly. This is as ugly as it gets. This is as ugly. This is bugly as it gets. It's a super ugly bugly. Oh, I made the world's worst cup of coffee. How? How did you manage that? Ugh. Whoa, that tastes like that tastes like butt. Yeah, I'm. That's awful. We could pause it. You could go make another one if you want. Ugh. I can't stand it. I'm gonna have to drink something else. <laughs> did you drink last night with Phil? My no. We're just we're up late chatting. Well, we we game till midnight. And then okay. we stopped and then we're like, okay, um, let's, uh, let's chat. And we started chatting and one hour turned into three hours. I was like, I'm like, Phil, it's three o'clock. Like I got to do ugly mugs. I got to ugly the mugs. I got to do the ugly. Are we, am I even doing this right? Did I even press the right buttons for this? Did you? Uh, yeah, I think we're recording. Dude, am I recording? Okay. I'm recording. Are we even recording? I Good morning, recording. This is the worst cup of coffee. Oh, my birthday <laughs> too. My cup of crap coffee. We should do. Someone we should bring do me this a coffee. Bring me a cup of coffee. You could bring me a cup of coffee. Oh, it's it's just awful. It's awful. How did you mess it up? I think I put too much coffee. Like I, I'm, a, dude. I'm wasted. I don't. I put the coffee in the French press. I put the coffee in the thing. And then, like, I think I poured too much of it. And then I went to press it, and it was, like, hard to press. I was like, what's the deal? So I put too much. So now it tastes like. And then the, uh, and then we're having this water because there's this reverse osmosis problem. What do you mean reverse osmosis? Oh, the water in Kingston in our area is not tasting very good. Ooh, not cool. Yeah, not cool. So. Let me ask you a um, a technical ugly mugs question here. Yes. How do you get the um, mm -hmm. how do you get the pages project into a um, an image file? How do you do that? Uh, dude, I can't think right now. Because I've I've created it all. I just have to transfer it from pages to an you're, an image file. You're doing the mug. Well, I figured since you were since you're uh, wasted. Yeah, but this is my <laughs> this is my like. Oh, oh well. We, didn't we already use that one already? No, we didn't. We used your mug that time when I when I had used this. But this is one of my favorite mugs. Okay, well, I'll That's... scrap my project and then you can. I just figured you would wouldn't want to do the, it. This is my Mad Hatter mug. Um, it's very cool because I like the cartoon version of Mad Hatter. I'm in the minority. Right. I think a lot of people enjoyed the the uh, the Tim Burton Alice Johnny but... Depp vers version. Yeah, like it's, you know, I don't it's know, weird because I'm a big Johnny fan and I like most of his roles, but and I love I love Tim Burton's work, but the Alice material, I don't know, like it's just for some reason I'm not, I don't. I'm not know. into it. I'm not into it. You're not into it either. Uh, like no, it never struck a chord with me. Okay, there like, was a um, there was a made for TV Alice in Wonderland movie Ooh, that came out, dude. and it's very very good, dude. Which one though are you talking about? I think the one that came out in the nineties. Okay, I may or See, may not. If have we had seen a producer, if we had a producer, there's maybe one that came out. Now. There's one that came out in the eighties that I was maybe that's the one I'm talking about. Really, I was familiar with as a as a boy, like as a young, a young a young lad. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm, Gil. Mm, Gil. Let me let me just look it up here. Uh, Alice in Wonderland TV Dude, movie. I'm so tired. Oh my god, I'm gonna fall asleep on this show. <laughs> I just sneezed in my wife's shirts. You just sneezed in your who? in my wife's sh- in my wife's shirts. I'm I'm recording in my beautiful recording closet, my studio closet. And my wife's shirts are all hung up here. And I turned oh, over no. and I just full on sneeze <laughs> in her Action Bluey. Uh, okay, there's one that came out in 1985. It was a TV miniseries. That's the one I'm familiar with. 85. Yes. Mm-hmm. And just, yeah, I, I remember seeing that in as a, this might be the one I'm talking about too. 85. That's so long ago. Oh my God. Ancient. Oh yeah. I'm so, I'm looking at the pictures here. This is the one. Yeah, dude. I remember that one as a kid. The but White Rabbit with a full card costume. Yeah. But I haven't seen that since I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But the Mad Hatter of the cartoon, the Disney cartoon, no one can beat that guy. That guy is a serious comedic The one there, there's, there is another one in the, um, in the 90s. Yeah. In 1990, they did a TV movie. Yeah. And... Look at you. This go. one has Mr. Mr. Lookups. This one, oh, this one has the girl from um Corinna Corinna. Do you remember the movie Corinna Corinna? Yeah. Uh, um Tina Mar- 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 Margino. T- remember Corinna, her dad? Corinna. Her dad's the one who um uh, uh wrote the the Jello jingle and uh Whoopi Goldberg was the mom was like the uh, um, the maid who became her mom. Do you remember? I have no. I I know of this movie. I just can't remember it at all. I can't. Her remember. um, the late the girl that plays uh the the main part in it is Alice. Alice in it, yeah. Oh. And it looks like Whoopi Goldberg and Robbie Coltrane is in it. Hmm. Hmm. I don't. I ben don't Kingsley's remember. the Caterpillar. Ben Christopher Kingsley? Lloyd. Yeah, Ben Kingsley's the Caterpillar. <laughs> I love Ben Kingsley. Oh wow! There's a Miranda Richardson and Christopher Martin Lloyd Short. is in it. Martin remember? Short is the Mad Hatter. Yes, I rem- I vaguely remember that. Like, oh man, I want to see that again. Like, I'm yeah. sure I'm sure it doesn't hold up necessarily, but still, Gene, dude, Gene Wilder played the uh, one of the turtles. Gene Wilder's in today. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of names here. Willy Wonka. Yeah, huh. that's cool. Yeah, Mr. Wonka. So good morning. Yeah. Uh, welcome good morning. to the show, everyone. Um, mm-hmm. This was a impromptu. We we couldn't do it yesterday. My daughter started mm-hmm. musical theater class yesterday. I'm so excited, dude. I'm so happy for her. Um, musical theater people theater. are the best people. Like seriously, you know, the best time I had my problem my whole life doing stuff was when I was part of musical theater and just acting and part of theater. I should have, you know, looking back on it, I should have gone to university at Queens for theater as opposed to going to Trent for archaeology. I, I, I love history and I love archaeology, but my heart really rests with the theater. And I, you know, had a nice guidance counselor who convinced me that I would never make a living or never even survive in the theater program. So I decided not to do it. And, uh, you know, all these years later, I still regret it. So, you know, I love that stuff. Mm-hmm. But it is what it is. Now I get it's to pop with you. Stuff. It, and it's it's the good stuff. Is is your daughter excited? She already so she's already been. She she's yesterday. so yeah. She went yesterday. She's so excited for it. She loves it. She oh, thinks that's it's great. The coolest thing. She's like I made like ten new friends. Like oh, that's great. Yeah, she's she's excited for it. So oh, that's super. That's super cool. Well, guess, hey, guess what else I got in news? In news today, just this morning, at four maybe four o'clock this morning, somewhere between four o'clock four thirty. Yeah. Um, while you were sleeping. Mine, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I was yeah barely sleeping. Um, a friend of mine, his, his daughter was born. Shane. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hey. So I don't know the name of, uh, of the daughter, girl. but born on my birthday and sharing it with hey. me. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice, dude. Can't get enough of your love. So I woke you, I woke you up on your birthday. Yeah. Doing ugly mugs. Yes, mm. you did. Yeah. And on your birthday, you're drinking the worst cup of coffee the you've ever made. Wor- like I'm, I keep looking down at it from the monitor here, like in front of me. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to put my lips near it, but at the same time, I'm so used to, like to getting through this ugly mugs with some coffee in my in my veins. But like, I can't do it, man. Like I ruined this cup of coffee. It is ruined. 
you know, uh, you know, you don't normally have to get through it. You uh, can just enjoy, right? Like you don't have to. <sighs> yeah, I can't do that. Like we're in, we're in co- coffee trouble over here because we bought this, uh, we bought this, uh, I don't know what they call an espresso machine and it was silly. It doesn't even make hot coffee. Get this. So this particular model, we thought, okay, Nespresso, we're upgrading, okay, from Keurig, which is what George we Clooney. He always George says it's Clooney, good. Danny DeVito said it was good. Dan- I, Danny, I I really trust Danny DeVito's. Yeah, I, I uh, trust Danny DeVito. Yeah, because he's normally trustworthy. Plays, you know, he's the trustworthy guy. Twins, you know. Twins, romance, penguin. The stone, you know, the penguin. The penguin, I you know, trust that would, guy. Would the penguin try to hustle you? I don't think so. No, he was ele- an elected official. Um, <laughs> so, I almost spit all my coffee all over the place. <laughs> so I trusted the penguin and George Clooney, and um, and man, betrayed, betrayed. Like it doesn't even make a model, hot cup of coffee. The model that we bought doesn't even make hot coffee. Like it actually it? says, so I, I, I Googled it. Okay. Uh, are you have, is anybody else having this problem? And even on their website, it says, oh, you bought this model of Nespresso? Oh yeah. Just put it in the microwave if you want it to be hot. Really? It actually suggest that. It's like, uh, how about you make the coffee hot when it comes out of the machine? How about that? That's kind we, of it. That's the thing, weirdest man. thing I've ever heard. It's the, honestly, it is the weirdest thing. It is mental. Absolutely mental. It's like buying an ice cream maker, but you're like, you have to freeze the product in the freezer to make ice cream. So then I, I told, I told my wife, I said, look, okay, we'll, we'll get rid of this machine and we'll go to French press for a while. Right. And that's what I'm doing this morning. Although it just, it is not working out. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what to do. I bought Muskoka maple with a hint of maple uh, coffee for all of us Canucks over here. It's oh, the Canucks. We like, uh, we like our, uh, we like our maple. Um, put the tree sap right in there, folks. Um, but it didn't work out and French press. I don't know. I was, I, I actually looked up this morning. Like, did I do it wrong? Like, like French press, how long? Like normally it's like three minutes. Like, you know what? Yeah. And then I read just briefly on French press, it says, oh, there's a danger with French press coffee because it leaves behind a certain uh, component in coffee and doesn't get it out of the filtration process, which is bad for your cholesterol. And I'm like, oh, great. I'm like, No, oh, here's another thing. I might as well just drink cold coffee. Thanks, Nespresso. Might as well have, like, I'll have to get up and just crack a Pepsi. The only thing I know about caffeine. French press is that it is a fantastic uh, uh, song by uh, Rolling Blackouts Coastal uh, Coastal Fever, which is, is an Austra- Australian band. Yeah, it's really awesome. Oh, I don't know that. It's great. Um, we normally don't do this, but we're going to do it. Don't anyways. do it. It's going to be copyrighted. We don't make money off this anyways. All of our patrons will be able to listen to it. It's just people on YouTube won't be able to. Oh, okay. I'm digging that. It's really good. Such good guitar work. Yeah, it's kind of a little bright and crisp, eh? But like the Smiths. Yeah. Yeah, it's really great. Um, can you send we me? We really, a- you know what? We really fucking need to do a music show, dude. Seriously? Oh, dude, yeah. I know. Enough of this lollygag and dragging our knuckles. We gotta fucking do a music show. There's a guy online that's killing it for music right now. I forget his name. I've got him on my feed, but man, he's good. For us yeah, to be eh? up, he is so good, dude. Like, wow. Like, I'm talking like, you know, Alan Cross. Like, oh, yeah. Like, I, I listened to a podcast called really 60 good. Songs That Explain the 90s yeah. by a guy called Rob Harvillo. And uh, he's really fucking great, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. He um, he examines certain songs that came out in the 90s. But mm-hmm. by examining those songs, he tells a little bit about the 90s, too. It, like, it informs that time period kind of sure. thing. Sure. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. It's really nineties. I was there for part of it. I was there. You were there. <laughs> you were there. You, just like you were here for part of this ugly mugs episode. This episode, I, I feel like I feel like I'm the Cheshire Cat and I could disappear at any moment. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh. That's funny. And the Momorats outgrave. So we have a few things we should talk about. Um, yes. We, um, this week's episode. Um, Weren't there questions? About there were some things? questions. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, this oh, okay. week's episode was we were um, episode six. We, cha- uh, we covered chapters eight, nine, and ten. Ten being that very, very small um, uh, flashback uh, chapter with Shalon, where you read the whole thing. Um, Shalon's father <laughs> is telling her a, um, a lullaby. Yes. And they're pu- she's pulling her out of a room where there's two corpses and stuff. We're not really sure what's happening in yeah. there. But... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. I know a little bit more about the other um the other two things in it were Dalinar advising uh High Prince Aladar on the plateau run and Kaladin um he takes the t- the new recruits into the ch- chasm and like is trying to make them re- like have a rebirth down there. Like they're being invited into the club, this secret club that everyone talks about. Right, this bridge four club. So yeah, it's a really really cool uh, trio of chapters. Um, the one of the things I wanted to talk about it. Um, uh, first yes. off, the uh image, uh, the art uh, that we used was by Ray Miller Art. Um, fantastic little piece of a uh, a chasm with the light at the end of the chasm where everything's kind of dark until you mm-hmm. see the end. I like how I saw um, this. Yeah, I like how barren that image looks because you know we. A lot of the chasm uh, uh, pieces that we see, and they're beautiful, have a lot of foliage and a lot of uh, uh, flora all over the place. And, you know, sometimes there isn't that. Sometimes it's just rock and dirt and mud and tufts of little, you know, rock buds and stuff. But there's not really that much life going on down there. And it seems dead. So I kind of like this um, this image that he uh, he did. It's really, really beautiful. Um, One of the things I'm I did want to talk about. Oh, go ahead. I'm trying to find it, but I can't. It's not coming up on my. Feed. Just go to um. Just go to the uh, um the Stormpod uh, page on uh, on Instagram. I, I thought I was there, but it's not coming up. Why? That's weird. That's a weird beard. That's a weird of a beard type. Okay, well it's okay. I'll find it. I'll find it after. But uh... yeah. Sweet. So um. One of the things I wanted to talk about about this chapter was um, Cal ends up writing um, or Cal asks uh, uh, Sill if a spread are you on, could have are written... you on a first name basis now too as uh... me and Cal yeah like you could... yeah me and yeah you just call him Cal well I call him Cal um, Mike calls him Carl so Mike call- Mike calls him Carl that's true Carl Carladin. <laughs> I call him Mr. Kaladin. Mr. Stormblast. Mr. Stormblast. <laughs> Don't forget, oh, forget that coffee. So bad. That coffee is taint. It's filled I, with taint. Dude, I, you, your lips is almost cursed. touched it. Your lips almost touched it. You keep forgetting every time. Dude, this is brutal. My apologies for the, uh, the gross... No good. Uh, uh, nose sounds over here. I'm, my allergies are acting up in this closet. Don't infect your wife's chemise. I. It's too late. It's too late. Uh, shirt thirty-five to sixty-two over here is just splattered with. Um, so yeah, in in this uh, series of chapters, we t- uh, covered this time when Cal asks Sill mm. if a spren could have written the words on the wall during the high storm that those first words that appear in Adelar's right. room. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, Syl says that she's seen strange spren about dangerous spren. And then she poses herself the question storm spren maybe. And this is, we recorded this before we recorded right. the chapters with Zenli and Ash Ash and I, who are looking f- to gain storm form. So I just, right. it was a little bit of a callback, some information that happened before we actually got there to the actual meat of it. So I just wanted to bring it up to you and to, to, to remind us that, right. Right. That still is, was suggested. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, she yeah. saw that she's been seeing strange spren about dangerous <laughs> spren, potentially maybe storm spren, she says. So, yeah. So, and we know that. Still I thought, I thought I was, things- I was seeing a lot of spren around too. And then 
found out there were just Pokemons lurking around. So. Uh, what do you mean? How, you have Pokemon over there? No, there's little Pokemons everywhere. You catch them everywhere. You can catch there's them. One if you sitting can. over there in that chair right now. Yeah. Is it a Phil? No. Oh, he's not. Oh, that, think, uh, he's a big. Uh, that's a problem, friend. Yeah, I, I know about those problems, friend. I got one sleeping upstairs in my guest room. Oh, he okay. He's sleeping in the guest room. I yeah. thought I wasn't sure if he was sleeping in the basement. No, or... no, he's not there. Um. So yeah. Uh. So yeah. I just wanted to kind of like ruminate a little bit on this storm spread thing. Yeah. I think that uh, um Sanderson kind of gave us a little bit of a clue here before we even Ooh. got to the uh to the actual storm form. You know, and then drop this idea of the storm spread. Yeah, I kind of uh, I didn't really spend a lot of time thinking about that. I, I remember no. I remember her suggesting that there were strange spread about, but uh, right. But I mean, storm spread is just a kind of little nugget that gets dropped, and then mm. Esh and I and Venley discuss trying to get storm form, and right. then later on, you know, uh, uh, later on in our recording where we've been, um, we get the little excerpt excerpta excerpta. We excerpita? get the little excerpta from um, the Razapaberry jam from the song of uh, secrets or whatever that talk about storm form. Mm. So there's this like three part reveal again. Right. So it's uh that's really cool. Neat. Hi, Syl. I like it. There's there she is. Oh, there she is. So cute. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if we sleepy. want to, um, do you want to talk about some of the questions that the. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's asked? do it because I'm I'm fading fast, dude. I'm going to have to. Have to. It's going to be like a t- 20 minute pod or a 20 minute episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's do it. What's the question? I, I remember something about RPG. What's the deal? Yeah. So the first question was the first question. The first question was from uh, Simi Jensen, also known as Papi No. Papi No. Papi No. 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 Um, he asked, uh, which other role playing rule sets have you guys played? Which ones stuck with you? Uh, one step further, forget the rule set. What settings have you played? Uh, um, that uh, have you played role playing tabletop games and enjoyed? Like, what, like, what other kind of games have we played and settings have we played that we've enjoyed? Right. So, other than D and D, other than D and D, yeah. Okay. So, I've played and enjoyed uh, Paranoia, which is a, um, I guess you'd call it's a it's a futuristic game. It's a I guess a science fiction, basically a science fiction game. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, it, it's a it's a dystopian future sort of game where the computer is in charge and uh, is out to <laughs> basically out to get you. And it's a it's a bit of a you know everyone's out for themselves, uh, trying to get through the the adventure and the paranoia of course comes from not only that you can't trust any of your friends and allies around you but you can't trust the computer right although you would always have to declare that you trusted the computer because you would say all hail the computer uh to get uh it was it was just it's a it was a fun fun environment i remember playing i really miss playing that i i would I don't think I could run it, but I would love to participate in a in a. In a I game, right? I've never played it. I've heard so much about it from you guys talking about it. I've heard tons from Roski, our buddy Sean Roski. Hey, yeah, Roski. Yeah. Um, he's talked about it. He's it's actually great. talked about running it for us before. It's so um, much fun. But uh, I've never played it. I've lo- I'd love to. It sounds sounds exactly like an improv game. Something yeah. that you play an improv yeah. class. It's just a like hoot, a man. It's like just... a death in a minute kind of thing or something like it it's fun. killer. It's killer. I, lo- I love that one. I loved. Uh, I've played a little bit in. Uh, well, I pl- I've spent a lot of time in uh, in uh, Star Wars, so right. I do like various mechanics uh, in Star Wars, um, but mainly uh, West End games, Star Wars, right? Yeah. Uh, well, that's where I spent the majority of my time playing for sure. Uh, is the West End games uh, D six system. Uh, yeah, mechanic, but I mean, Star Wars in general is, an, is a nice setting to explore and have fun with. Um, and then I've spent a little bit of time that I got to play in um, some uh, vampire and mm-hmm. uh, the masquerade, um, which I thought was a lot of fun. Tabletop or LARP? Uh, tabletop. And yeah. actually, most recently, the game that I, I really am kind of fascinated by. Um, is that I was a player in a Warhammer RPG game. Mm-hmm. I've heard it's really good. The 40K. And yeah. Like it, and it was really good done by mm-hmm. a friend of mine, Matt, who, who runs it. And um, I've heard it's good. 
Yeah, the material is good and the mechanic is actually quite elegant in terms of the... Uh... Oh, I lost my thought. <laughs> Because I need my coffee and I can't drink it because I told you you can pause and run upstairs and get a coffee and come back. Possessed by the devil. Maybe it needs more milk. No, in fact, oh my god, it's curdling. No, it's not. No, no joke, dude. It looks like rice pudding in there now, or no, like a brain. <laughs> it does. It looks like rice. It looks pudding. like oh, you have tapioca in there. Or? It looks like tapioca or like a brain a scum brain is formed on the top like i'm serious dude this thing is thinking now it's is... <laughs> it's evolved <laughs> oh my god it's evolved it's like that uh it's like that episode of um uh love death robots did you see that one love Where it was death like robots they... no on netflix the series of animated shorts that they did love death robots oh yeah i mean i don't know i can't man <laughs> <laughs> um anyways there's an episode where yogurt takes over the world but anyways. yogurt takes over i like this idea it's funny. it's funny um for me for rpgs um i would say right off the top i've played mostly D D. um i've played a lot of other rule sets but the best the crowning achievement of anything that i've played to be honest is how our buddy mike the craft master, if you uh, have received something in the mail, it's because Mike has made it and sent it to you. But Mike was able to fuse Star Wars Saga Edition and X-Wing Minis into one cohesive game where you do the tabletop role playing with your character sheets um, through the Saga Edition, which comes after the 3.5 Star Wars Edition. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a, a fourth edition almost because after that it switches over to Fantasy Flight um uh, rule set so this is like the last vestige of a d20 uh, star wars rule set and he fused in star wars minis i don't know if anybody out there has played star wars minis but it's a completely different game it's literally just a um combat simulator with little bonums and you use rulers to make how distance how far you fly and um, you have little cards with your with your ship on it and with its stats. He fused those two systems into one. So when we're talking as our characters and role playing, we're doing one thing. And then when it comes to ship combat, ship combat has always been clunky in role playing games. But Mike was able to take this other ship combat game and fuse it into this game. I just got to give him props. It's one of the mo it's the crowning achievement of anything that I've ever played. Um, I've obviously played some amazing amazing campaigns in my day uh jack's uh, uh, swords of a catherine campaign is amazing and i've been part of uh, other games by my buddy Dwayne that have been uh, 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 just amazing but this the concept of fusing these two rule systems into one thing is just bar none the top of the pops it's amazing but uh, yeah, I've played uh, other games like um, I run a uh, Dresden Files Fate system. So I really love the Fate system. Um, that's a really fun game where things are a little more vague and you can kind of interpret things how you want. You kind of come up with your own magic system. There isn't uh, a, a magic system nailed down. You kind of just come up with it on your own. Um, the guys, uh, I think, uh, I think enjoy our, our Dresden Files game. So that's, uh, I've played Numenera. Jay's run Numenera for us. We've played, um, I've played a lot. Back in the day, I played a lot of werewolf and vampire, um, a couple of LARPs, but I never really got into the LARP. But um, yeah, there's the other question we have here by Buzzkill Joe actually kind of coincides with this. He asks, um, there is an upcoming Avatar The Last Airbender role playing game coming out um, and it's going to be um, uh, you. Yeah, it's going to be about that. Yeah. And it's going to be um, um Powered by the Apocalypse. So Powered by the Apocalypse is a, a, a game company that have put out a bunch of different things. They're most notable for uh, Dungeon World and um, and now for The Last Airbender, I'm sure it'll probably be one of their better their better sellers or their better um, uh, systems. I've never played that rule system at all. Have you ever uh, no, dabbled in that at all? No, I've not. But I mean, an Avatar The Last Airbender role, uh, role playing game. Yeah, that yeah. sounds like a lot of fun. Sounds, sounds amazing. It's only the best story ever written since, I don't know, since... A lot of for a long time yeah a long time <laughs> i mean that's one of the it's one of the main inspirations for my monk character in your swords of a catherine game that and kung fu panda <laughs> i would like the, the last airbender like that that role-playing game would be a lot of fun so if that's if yeah. that's really happening i'm very very interested 
Yeah, we could totally do that. I don't know if, if if we would be able to pull it off in terms of like any of us actually playing it. I I'm actually really curious about this Green Knight RPG that I have over here. Like I maybe maybe that's what you should run on our cottage weekend. I got you should I crack gotta, that open and look at it. Yeah, I really I would like to. I it's still in this, it's still sealed up and I haven't You haven't seen, seen the movie yet. Though. No, dude. I was hoping to maybe see it this week. I still haven't seen Black Widow. Yeah, I haven't like, seen Shang Chi, which is actually our next question. Oh, dude! Um, so Jasper wants to know our thoughts on it, and I haven't seen it, so we can't really talk about it. Right? I now. just loved so. it. I loved it. I thought it was great. I just, uh, you know, I thought it had a great sense of humor. The action, the you know, was in my opinion, it was really great. Um, I loved the lead actor. I thought he did a great job with the character. I used to read yeah. Master Kung Fu as a kid. I loved this character. Um, and it was great to have him on the on the big screen. It's just it's it was great, and and I, cool. I didn't I didn't anticipate the epic sort of ending that they were going for. It just it the film just kept opening up into larger and larger things, and I was like, wow, this is just great. Cool, like, eye candy, popcorn movie. It's just great. It's hard, um, you know, how many years we've been in here? Fifteen years into the MCU to do a new origin story. It mm -hmm. must be really tricky to pull off you know, a brand new character, a new origin story, but then still feel like it's kind of connecting to everything still, it must've been hard to do. Well, I loved it. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, they had a few drop-ins with uh, a couple of like- uh -huh. oh, oh. oh, right. I can't talk. Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, this is the time that I, you gotta, you gotta keep me uh, innocent now, right? Well, is it- is Normally it, it's me keeping is it, you innocent. Is, is, is the lead actor's name, is, is it Simu? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so okay, so he, yeah, he's fantastic. And then my son, who is with me in the theater, he has a big, big crush on Aquafina, which is awesome. Yeah. So and she's she kills it. I like I don't know. She like Simu, like you're great, dude. But man, she she stole, stole a bit the show. Of the screen. Well, she stole the screen with with what she with what she did with that character. Um, yeah. I thought, anyways. Um, no, everybody was great in it. I just, I thought it was just great. Just had a great time. The, the imagination in terms of the, the characters uh, in one of my, in one of my, my pirates games, I was developing a lot of uh, animals and plants and things like that. So in Shang-Chi, there's a place that they go to where there's very imaginative creatures and things like that. And uh, so I, I just, it resonated with me. I thought it was just this great. Yeah. I, I, it makes sense that uh, that Aquafina might have stolen the show because we have this like long line of things in the MCU where mm. sometimes the side character is the character that steals the show. Like in the Ant Man movies, you know, Michael Pena is like the reason why you want to watch that movie when he does those fast talking recaps of things and like of their plan. <laughs> those are amazing moments, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, totally. Uh, the character of Darcy in uh, Thor: The Dark World was really the only oh Darcy only oh my god reason. are you kidding meow 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 yeah exactly that's forget what I mean. it what's Jeez. her name again that that um, gal forget it forget uh, it I know I, I always forget her name and she's awesome she was in uh, the playlist movie and she was in uh, Two Broke Girls yes I can't well, I can't remember her name right now that's just silly. Anyways, big crush. She's one. Of, I might have to put her on 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 the crush list because uh, on the crush list. Yeah, I, I my crush list is really short. Cat, right, Cat Dennings. Cat Dennings. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah she, she, she was might in. Have uh, to go on the crush list. She was in uh, Wandavision, right? Her character appeared in Wandavision again. So. The Wandavision. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Right. Yeah, she's totally great. She's killer. Um. Yeah, um, I'll have to. I'll have to. Uh, behind me, I've got proof of my my crush on the wall which is lisa benet but speaking of crushes before we sign off i just gotta say i watched the uh, soleil moon fry documentary on uh, amazon prime last week uh, called moon. kit kit oh, yes. 90 yeah yeah it's yeah. really yeah. really I great i started it and it's really great i started it and I, I didn't finish it i got a little sad about it it made me i did sad. yeah i didn't think i was gonna get so emotional uh over it um you know yeah. we we kind of grew up in that time period and yeah. um and like you know kind of saw her grow up as we grew up too because you know we were the same kind of the same age as she was when she was on punky brewster and then as she matured into you know a teenager we were doing the same right, so right. it um yeah it was kind of struck a chord for me um it was really well done i um yeah i liked it a lot 
It was a good movie. Yeah, I should I should finish that. I started it and, uh, and it got to a heavy part, and I just I had to turn it off and do something else. Um, yeah. So I'll there are a few heavy parts. The amount of loss she suffers over her teenage years from her oh, friends dude. and stuff is uh, well, is all of them like I mean, so many of them had such a hard time, and of course there were a few actors in there that I didn't know had suffered so much. Yeah, you know it's funny. I I think I had forgotten that Jonathan Brandis had died. I until think. I saw the movie like right. I kind of forgot I think I knew it back then right um because Sequest was a, such a huge part and like I mean yeah let's not forget uh, the uh, sequels the um never ending story sequels and stuff with him yeah um mm-hmm. but I you know I think I had totally forgotten that he had passed away and that's you know 30 years ago so I mean you yeah. know it's I know crazy yeah but yeah what a great doc it was really really great um, next on my doc list is I'm going to try to finish that Val Kilmer documentary that's on oh, uh, Amazon dude. Prime. I, I've been avoiding a few documentaries for that reason. The 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 91 being one of them, and Val yeah. certainly. And then there's uh, there's a Gord Downey tragically hip, you know, tributes and last concerts and things. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just I'm not in a good place emotionally, so I'm like I don't know if I can be shattered anymore. So. I've been yeah. keeping them at bay, but the I, I want to see the Val. I really do. But uh, yeah. at the same time, I don't know if I'm, I'm trying to his, avoid. Uh, a, I, I started it and his, his son, the really remarkable thing is his son narrates. Yeah. Yeah. Because he can't, right. Because yeah. he's lost his voice. Right, right. And his son sounds exactly like him, dude. It's yeah, almost, yeah. it's, it, it really does sound like you're listening to a 16 year old Val Kilmer. Well, talk about his life did you hear about the uh the uh ai or you know programs or whatever that have given him his voice back no so basically they they have technology now that he can use that val kilmer can use where he can speak and it'll put out audio Translate. in his actual voice oh that's really cool and so he now has his voice back right Probably not the way that he would have wanted, but no, um, but, 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 but he, pretty cool. He's saying, yeah, really cool. Like it's yeah. fascinating. Like I think that whole thing is, and really, and, and the, and the other great thing I'm looking forward to is seeing him in Top Gun too. I haven't seen Top Gun. Is he in Top Gun too? Tom Cruise apparently insisted on it. Oh yeah. And said, no, like you are in, even though he was, you know, going through a hard time with, uh, yeah. with his cancer, um, he he insisted that Iceman be in it. So that's really cool. It's really cool. So that's really cool. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. The the interesting part of these two docs that we're talking about is that um, both Sally Moon Fry and Val Kilmer felt the need to record everything in their lives. Mm, yeah. And so we get this footage of almost every moment, right? These like really cool backstage off screen moments between actors. And like back then, they're like, oh, you're just filming me. Not a big deal. Mm. Nowadays, you would never have that. Actors would be like, what are you filming me for? Mm. Like, what are you going to use that for? Kind of thing, right? Yeah. So <laughs> it's interesting to see these like a nice quiet moments. But um, yeah, so uh, I guess that's cool. the episode. That's the show. Um, yeah, we don't have very much <laughs> left to say. Um, no one hopped on this time, which is, you know, totally okay. It's Sunday That's morning. Okay. But um, maybe everyone's uh, listening to the early release that uh, popped up this morning at six o'clock. So, oh, uh oh. You getting a call? Yeah, I'm getting a call. That's okay. Well, we're, we're signing off anyway, so you can answer it. We're signing off. So, yeah. there you go. I'm getting everyone. Thanks a lot. Go away, birthday calls. Go, um, go make yourself a coffee. A better coffee. I'm going to have to go out. I'm going to have to yeah. go out and get one because yeah. it ain't happening inside of this house. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you very much for, uh, for listening. Um, Till next time. Take care, everybody. <laughs>